This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe And keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I fix my eyes on you This is my focus All of my days I know where my hope is I live it loud I shot the chorus Because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe And keep on Hello humans, it is I, Ek, and welcome back to the series Changing Gears. We have been learning that some things need to change, like people, and Ek, Ek is trying to change into a better robot. We have also learned that one thing never changes, and that is God's love for us that never changes. Isn't that an amazing thing? And today's big idea is also about change. It will fry your circuits and might blow your mind. Today's big idea is Jesus can change anything. Oh my goodness. I think I'm starting to overload. My goodness. Oh. Uh, uh, let's go to the today's Bible story so that I can cool my circuits and basically chill out. I'll catch you later. Jesus was good friends with a brother and sisters named Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. They lived in the town of Bethany, which was close to Jerusalem. One day, Lazarus became extremely sick. The sisters sent a message to Jesus asking him to come and heal Lazarus. When Jesus got the message, he said, Lazarus will get well, and this will show God's glory through me. Jesus didn't rush to Bethany right away. He stayed where he was teaching for two more days. The disciples asked Jesus not to go at all. 
Teacher, you can't go there. It's too dangerous. The Pharisees are looking for you to kill you. But Jesus was determined to go. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I am going to wake him up. The disciples answered, it's a good thing to take a nap when you're feeling sick. He'll feel better when he wakes up. No, you don't understand me. Lazarus is dead. What is about to happen will help you believe that I am the Messiah. The disciples weren't happy about heading into danger, but Thomas spoke up and said, We should go too. We might as well die with them. So they all set out to walk to Bethany. By the time they arrived, Lazarus had been dead for four days. Martha ran out to meet Jesus. If only you had been here, Jesus, my brother wouldn't have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Master. All along I have believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus asked Martha to get Mary. Mary got up and ran to Jesus. When she saw him, she fell at his feet and sobbed. <laughs> if only you had been here in time. Jesus was deeply moved by Mary and Martha's sorrow, and he wept. He asked to be taken to Lazarus' tomb. It was a small cave in the hillside with a slab of stone across the entrance. Jesus commanded, remove the stone. Everyone thought that it was a terrible idea, but they did it anyway. Jesus prayed, Father, I'm grateful that you have listened to me. I know you always listen, but on account of this crowd, I've spoken so that they might believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. Everyone held their breath and focused on the grave. Then they heard something moving in the cave. A body wrapped in grave clothes from head to toe appeared. No one moved. They just stood and stared. Jesus told them, unwrap Lazarus and let him loose. Lazarus was alive again. Many of the people in the crowd believed in Jesus that day, but others reported to the Pharisees everything that happened. Oof. Okay. So this is my bike. Well, it's my friend's bike, but there's a lot to know about it. So this whole series, we've kind of been talking about gears and stuff, right? And what makes a bike move? Gears. So we're gonna go through and look a little bit into those. So if we'll see here, these are all the gears that makes the bike move. You have little gears right in here, and then they're connected to each other through the little holes, right? So once one gear clicks and moves and into another hole, that's what makes the chain move, and that's what makes the back wheel move. So when the back wheel moves, that's what makes the entire rest of the bike move. When it comes to making the bike move and making all the chains and the gears move together, the first thing that I have to do is step onto the bike. It's kind of like taking a step of faith that once I put my foot on the pedal, the rest of the bike will move and I will be good to go. The same kind of thing happens when you're taking a step in faith with God. See, he's the God of the universe, of everything. So he lets us choose things. He won't force us to do anything, but we need to take that step of faith to connect with him in order to do what he wants us to do. So our big idea today is Jesus can change anything, which is awesome because that means literally anything. So when we choose to have faith in him, we are connected to Jesus, which also means that we are connected to his all knowingness and all of his power that is kind of hard for us to understand. But when we're connected to that power, he can change the lives of the people around you. So we know that if I pedal this bike super, super, super fast, that it'll go super, 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 super fast. But 
what happens if I just go down a hill? Well, let's go and try that out. Okay, that was really fast and really cool, but a little bit out of control. That's kind of like what it can feel like when God's grace moves in our life. See, God has all of this power and all of that power can work in us, but when he does that, it can sometimes feel a little bit scary. But we have to be willing to take our feet off the ground, take that step of faith. Faith. With God's power in our lives, we know that He can change anything. He can change the lives of people around us and He can change our life. So we just have to be brave and continue to put our faith in Him. Hey out there, so here we are with another memory verse game, our last memory verse game for this entire series. So I have my friend Luisana here and we're gonna play a game. This is matching the characters. So underneath each of these numbers is a different character, movie character that some of you guys may recognize. And um, I don't, we don't know which character is underneath which number. We have to find its movie match. And if we do find its movie match, we can take the pieces of the memory verse that are inside the paper. And after we complete everything, we will put the memory verse together. Sound good? Sound good. All right, do you want to go first or do you want to go second? I'll go first. All right. <laughs> Okay. Oh, we've got Optimus Prime. Ooh, very cool. All right. And I'm going to turn this one off. Oh. Okay, though. Not quite. Okay, your turn. All right, I'm going to go with number three here. Oh, Wally, I think I know that one's match. <laughs> we've got. Eva. All right, cool. So we get the pieces. Oh, get the okay. pieces. All right. All right, now it's your turn. Okay. Over here. Oh, Bumblebee. Bumblebee. And that goes with this one. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> yes, it does. No. It... <laughs> Don't trick me now. Yes, it does. All right, so you take the pieces out. Wait. All right, so one for one. Okay, well, this is, uh, hmm. How many options left here? All right, let's go with this one. Okay, C-3PO, Star Wars. Uh, afraid I might give you the answer. Ah! <laughs> Got it, all right. Awesome. Uh-oh, I think we're about to have a, uh, a tie, a tie. Game. No. and obviously number eight. Microbot. Microbot. Yeah. And I don't think it's that one. No, that one's already turned over. And hey, Baymax. Baymax. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's take those pieces. All right, so now we got to put this together, right? Okay. Oh, okay. Right, let's, let's do it. Ready? The <laughs> there are four. There are four. Is in Christ. Christ. The, the old, old. No, the new creation. The new creation. Has come. The old. The old has gone. gone. The new is here. Hey. Second Corinthians 5 17. Well, I hope you guys practice memorizing it this month. And uh, next month, we will get a new member verse. Thanks so much. Bye. Okay, I love to read. Do you like to read books too? They're so amazing. There's so many stories and so many things that you can learn. And I'll admit to you that there have been times that a story has been so good that I had to know how it ended. So I might have skipped through some chapters, maybe a lot of chapters, just to get to the book at the end to find out how it was all going to come together. Have you ever done that? I know, I tell people and people are like, you shouldn't do that, you need to wait, you need to go through the whole story. But no, I need to know how it's gonna end. There, I don't do it all the time, but it is kind of fun to find out. Now, 
Have you ever thought about your life and could you like fast forward it and get to the end and find out, hmm, what kind of decisions did you make? Did you get married? Did you have children? What kind of job did you have? You know, how did things work out for you? It seems like that that would be a really great thing to do to kind of get that idea of how things ended up in your life. But really, we just need to learn how to trust Jesus for our now and every day and trust him with the future as well. It's not really good for us to know everything, but it is good for God to lead us and to direct us. All right, so let's go to our Bible story that we learned about this week where Jesus is speaking to Martha. John 11, 25 through 26. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? In here, we can see that Jesus is asking Martha, can you believe me or trust me when things are hard? And you know what? She could. Now we know that God is all powerful and that Jesus can change everything or anything. But does that mean that God is gonna answer your prayer the way that you want him to answer it? Or if you pray for a miracle, that he's gonna give you a miracle? No. Now, God always answers our prayers, but he doesn't always answer them the way that we want him to. Let's look at another scripture. John 12, 37. But despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe in him. It's crazy, right? Jesus did all these miracles. I mean, People who are paralyzed are walking, people who couldn't hear are listening and hearing. The blind, people born blind, are now seeing. And despite all these miracles, people didn't believe in him. What were they lacking? They didn't have faith. They didn't believe who Jesus was. They didn't believe in him. And without faith, you can't develop a trust, right? And we need to trust God with our lives. And unfortunately, when people didn't believe, they didn't have that faith to do that. Let's look at one more scripture. Colossians 1.11. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience that you need. So when we go through hard times, God will give us the grace and the power that we need to be able to get through it. And you know, people are watching you and they're saying, do you really trust God? Do you have faith in him? Where's your confidence at? And when they see that you can trust in God and that he is helping you through those hard and difficult times, it will impact their lives and they too will wanna have faith and they too are gonna wanna learn how to trust in Jesus. So let me ask you a question. It's a hard question. So let's be real with each other and honest. Think about something that you have been praying for for a long time. Can I ask you a question? When you're praying, are you praying in such a way that you're telling God how he should answer? Like you've already got it figured out and you have an expectation and you want God to do things your way. So instead of trusting him, you're trying to manipulate it and make it work out the way you want it to go. So today I wanna to pray that we would learn to let God have his way. Remember Jesus, he prayed, your will be done, not my will. We need to pray the same way. We need to pray and surrender our will to God's and say, I don't know how you're gonna answer this, God. I hope you're gonna answer it this way, but if you don't answer it this way, it's okay. I'm gonna trust you and believe you because I know that you know what's best and I, I can totally rely and be confident with that. So let's pray together, okay? And let's ask God to help us to trust him with those things that we need his help with. So Father, I pray that you will help us to surrender our will to yours, that we will not try to force you or try to tell you how you should answer our prayers, but instead, Lord, that we will surrender them to you and know that you have everything in order and that you will answer the perfect way, the way that it needs to be answered. God, I pray that you will help us to build our faith and our trust in you and our confidence so that we know, God, no matter what happens, you've got everything under control and we can just rest in you and know that you'll work everything out for our good. 
Father, we love you. Help us today, God, to surrender our will to yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, humans. Uh, if Eck were a human being, he would be very sad because this is our final Changing Gears episode. If I could, I would be crying. Uh, but please do come back next week to find out what else will change. Later, humans.